Thanks for joining us here on NCN. We have a special news show for you, the viewers, as this new show is going to be called the NCN Sports Recap Show, as we're going to try to and give you all of the final scores from high school football games going on around the state with video recaps, highlights, and much more. And also, don't forget to check out our Twitter account, at NCN Sports, as well as our website, at NewsChannelNebraska.com, for all your Nebraska news and sports. Starting off the show, we want to catch you up on some games that went on Thursday. Elmwood Murdoch took on Cedar Bluff. Andrew Botnick has the game recap. Andrew Botwinick here with you live in Elmwood, Nebraska. A good Thursday night for some football action in Elmwood, Nebraska as the Knights look to move to 5-3 and three on the season for a second straight season. They had to get through the winless 0-7 Cedar Bluffs Wildcats, and that they did. Cade Hosier, your player of the game, as he came out and let loose as he came in with 1,350 yards on the season rushing, and he would end with two receiving touchdowns of 76 yards and 20 or rather 36 yards as well as a 68 yard touchdown reception rushing wise a 51 yard rushing touchdown and a 38 yard rushing touchdown for Kate Hozier as well as two receiving touchdowns in terms of kick return 75 yarder and a 78 yard kick return touchdown for Kate Hozier six total touchdowns and it's the Elmwood Murdoch Knights coming away with a win at home in the final regular season game on a Thursday night 68 to 36 Andrew Botwinick here with you in in Elmwood, Nebraska, signing off. And the next game from yesterday we want to show you a recap of was Weeping Water versus Power Myra. Here's the recap of that game. Marcus Lind with News Channel Nebraska from Weeping Water on a Class D1 matchup of epic proportions. Undefeated Weeping Water versus one loss Palmyra in what is one of the biggest games that we feel across the state from River Country. But a very competitive game to start the game off. It was 24 to 20 at halftime. Weeping Water with the lead as it was a back and forth game. Both teams exchanging leads on the ground. Very fast moving first half in less than an hour is that first half concluded, but Weeping Water able to score with under a minute, in fact, under 30 seconds in the first half and then get the ball back in the third quarter, was able to go down and score. And Hunter Mortimer, our player of the game, five touchdowns, went six of eight for 120 yards passing with three touchdowns, no interceptions. Weeping Water remains undefeated, hands Palmyra their second loss with a final score of 60 to 28 Weeping Water. And with that, we'll send it back on News Channel Nebraska. And yeah, that was a good win for Weeping Water. And next, another game that took place yesterday was between the seven and one Falls City Sacred Heart that took on the 1-7 Diller Odell. NCN's Michael Shively has the recap of that game. Hello from Diller, where the visitors, Falls City Sacred Heart, they get a monstrous Thursday night win in the eight-man regular season finale, 73-14 the final score. The Irish finish the regular season 7-1. and one. The hometown Diller Odell Griffins, they finish at 1-7. and seven. Uh, Here on the field, it's a gorgeous setting. Uh, behind me, actually, uh, if you can see it back there, there is a, yep, there's the baseball diamond behind us. Really fun setting for some football. Uh, but uh, the football, that was played by Jacob Jordan. He's the third-year starting quarterback, senior QB for Fall City Sacred Heart. He did everything and looked good doing it. A buck 57 on the ground. He threw for 151 yards. Jacob Jordan scored eight touchdowns. And the best play of the game was made by him on defense as a DB, a Superman-like grab on the far sideline. This was a uh, laugher from the start. It actually was a, a nice touchdown drive. Diller Odell, 65 yards on their first possession, took an 8 nothing lead after that 73-7 uh, to seven the rest of the way. Sacred Hearts for real, the rank number four in the NCN rankings. They have nine seniors, and you can never count out a Doug Goltz coached team. This team will be a force to be reckoned with in the playoffs, uh, led by their senior QB, Jacob Jordan. And thanks, Michael, for the recap of that game. And the last of Thursday's action we want to show you was between Sydney and Creek Valley. NCN's Alec Chisholm has more. Hey everyone, Alec Chisholm reporting in from Chapel, Nebraska on a cold Thursday night bundled up as we were outside broadcasting on 98.7 the big boy out of Sydney Nebraska Creek Valley erases a 36 to 14 third quarter deficit to defeat South Platte by a final score of 44 
to 42 in what was an outstanding outstanding fourth quarter of football. Creek Valley outscores uh, South Platte 24 to six in that final quarter. South Platte got off to a great start in the first quarter, leading 16 to nothing. Then after that, Creek Valley really matches them blow for blow, but still trailed 30 to 14 at the break, and then 36 to 20 at the end of the third quarter. And then again, the fourth quarter, Creek Valley's defense really stepped up, got stop after stop, and their offense kept punching it into the end zone using big plays through the air. Eli Schmidt, quarterback on his senior night, by the way, for Creek Valley, finishes with five total touchdowns, three through the air, one on the ground, a kickoff return as well. The other big storyline from this game, Creek Valley had seven players available for this game in a six-man football game. They had seven players available. Five of those players were seniors, and on their senior night, those five seniors played every single snap. Post-game, talked to two of those seniors, Lucas Trujillo and Eli Schmidt. Both of them said it ranks at number one or number two for victories in their entire careers. Creek Valley is now three and four on the year. They will travel to Potter Dix, an absolute powerhouse this year in six-man football to finish their regular season. South Platte drops to one and six on the year, a tough loss for them. One I'm sure they feel they should have had. They will travel to, or no, they will return home next week, excuse me, to take on Arthur County to finish up their season. And thanks, Alec, for that great recap. All of Friday's games are going to be coming up just right after the break. It's that time of year again. Fall colors, the smell of burning leaves, and jack-o'-lanterns. A time for trips to the pumpkin patch, trick-or-treating, and kids' costumes. All of us here would like to wish you a very happy Halloween this year. Life never stops moving. And between the 30 minute commutes, daycare pickups, and that weekend trip to grandma's, you're racking up the miles. What you need is a tire that can keep up, like the exceptionally long lasting Michelin Defender tire. And right now you can get up to $100 via reward card after submission with the purchase of four new Michelin tires at the T.O. Haas Tire nearest you. This is your home, your car, and you want to give them the protection they deserve with home and auto insurance. Call State Farm agent Annette Pritchard at 402-256-3171. Ever wonder what happens with the money you deposit with us? Well, your deposits enable us to make loans, personal, real estate, vehicle, and seasonal loans, all to local families. And this energizes our whole local economy. Stop by and let's talk. Together we grow. We're an equal housing lender. And thanks for joining us back here on the NCN Sports Recap Show. Next up, 6-1 Exeter Milligan Friend was taking on 1-6 Southern. Michael Shively also has the recap of that game. Hello from Milligan, Nebraska, where the hometown team, Exeter Milligan friend, uh, oh, they're feeling good tonight. EMF, uh, they get a major win over the Southern Raiders, a final score of 64 to 14 in this game. And uh, it, it was over really from the start. EMF, their defense was absolutely dominant, not allowing any rushing yards for Southern. In fact, the Raiders finished a sub-zero in rushing yards in this game. That allowed EMF to get excellent field position throughout this contest, uh, and they took advantage of it. Uh, easy scoring drives and, and really balanced scoring effort. They scored on a 22-yard pass play. It was Christian Weber finding uh, Chase Savela for a 22-yard strike to open the scoring. Then a nine-yard run by the quarterback Weber. A 62-yard run by Brecken Schluter. That's a name you get to, you need to start learning if you're an eight-man football fan. Brecken Schluter, just a sophomore. He's phenomenal. Came in with 1,329 rushing yards, 17 rushing touchdowns on the season. Had a 62-yard gap for a score today. They didn't need much of him, though. Only gave their workhorse the football four times today. Then had a, a run from their fullback, Drake, and a 20-yard run from Weber. Scored a touchdown in each of their first five drives. 
Now, EMF, they are seven and one. Uh, the Raiders of Southern end their season at one and seven. EMF, uh, they might be a host. They're right on the edge there. They're in the East bracket for Class D1 if they'll be a host for a first round playoff game. They hope they will be. They have a good defense and a power run game and could make some noise in the Class D1 playoffs. I'm Michael Shively reporting in Milligan. And next up in our NCN recaps, we are gonna bring you the final for Grand Island versus Norfolk. Coming into this game, Norfolk came into this game with a three to four regular season record, but with a two and one record in the league. So this was a big one for them. They went against a Grand Island team with a four and three record and also a two and one record in regular season play. So something had to give in this game and the final score resulted in a 35 to 10 Grand Island victory over Norfolk. And moving on with the highlights, next we want to bring you a number three, Bellevue West, who took on number eight, Columbus. Bellevue West came into tonight's game with a 6-1 and one overall record and a 2-0 and oh record in league play. They were also averaging about 50 points a game on offense. With number eight, Columbus, they rolled in tonight's game with a 6-1 and one overall record and a 3-0 and oh regular season uh, uh, a league play record with about five touchdowns being scored in each game by them. The final score of this game had Bellevue West dominating Columbus with a 62 to nothing victory. Our next game we want to get to was the number three Aurora who took on number nine Northwest. Aurora came into tonight's game with a five and two overall record and hoped to stay undefeated in league play. On the other side, Northwest came into tonight's game with a 4-3 and three overall record, but also undefeated in league play. So somebody was going to stay unbeaten in league play, and somebody was going to have one loss on their record. And the final score was a 41-27 to 27 win for Aurora. So they stay unbeaten in league play. They win their sixth game in a row. And next up was a huge matchup between number four SCOTUS and number two Boone Central. SCOTUS came into tonight's game unbeaten at 7-0 and also unbeaten in league play at 3-0. While Boone Central was also unbeaten and 12 sacks on the season with their defense. And the final score of the game was a defensive game 7-6 with SCOTUS coming out on top in a great defensive game for both teams. And next up on our recaps of tonight's high school football games going on around the state is going to be number three, Pierce, that took on Battle Creek. Pierce game into Friday's game, uh, coming off a 57-41 win over West Point Beamer and improved to 6-1 overall. But I'm sure they wanted to, tight, to tighten that defense up a bit and not give up as many points as they did in last week's game. And for Battle Creek, they came into tonight's game with a 4-3 and three record, but was confident coming into the game considering they won last week 63 to nothing over O'Neill. The final score was 24-6 to six with Battle Creek coming out with a big win over Pierce. And next, we had Adam Central taking on St. Paul. For Adam Central, they came into tonight's game with a 4-3 and three overall record, but unbeaten in league play at 2-0. and They were also coming off a disappointing loss, 41-12 to Kearney Catholic. So they definitely wanted to get back on track. On the other side, St. Paul also had a 4-3 and three record, but was unbeaten in league play at 3-0. and They were also coming off a dominant victory, 46-14 against Central City. The final score of the game was 24 to nothing with Adam Central getting a much needed shutout, shutout victory. And don't go anywhere, much more highlights coming from around the state after the break. A new home can change the quality of your life. It's an investment in your family. A new home is a major financial commitment as well. And that's why we're committed to providing you with the best mortgage possible. Come see us for a mortgage you can live with. We're an equal housing lender. Madison County Bank, here to help you grow. Member FDIC, online at madisoncountybank.com. Knuckleheads Bar and Grill is the true definition of small town greatness. An atmosphere you have to see to believe, along with the coldest beverages around. It's a place where memories are made. Throw in their steakhouse menu, where the chef prepares only the best hand-cut choice steaks, which are then cooked to perfection over an open flame grill. Prime rib served every Friday and Saturday night. Noon specials are all homemade like Grandma used to make. Knuckleheads, located in downtown Laurel, Nebraska. 
In today's economy, you need a financial partner that understands agriculture and can help make the big decisions a little bit easier. From getting the right equipment to even the seed you need to plant your fields. In this part of the country, agriculture is more than just a job, it's a way of life. And thanks for joining us back here on the NCN Sports Recap Show. Number 10, Oakland Craig took on number one, Archbishop Bergen. Oakland Craig came into Friday's game with a 4-3 overall record and a 1-1 in league play and was coming off a shutout loss, though, 27 to nothing to Cedar Catholic. So if Oakland Craig was able to knock off the number one team in Archbishop Bergen, it would be a huge victory for them. But with Archbishop Bergen, regardless of being ranked number one in Class 2, they came into tonight's game with a perfect 7-0 record and averaging almost 50 points a game on offense. The final score from this game was 56-21 to with Archbishop Bergen getting the victory. And the matchup next we want to give to you was the number three, Yutton, who took on Bishop Newman. Yutton came into the game with an with an overall record of 6-1 and one and perfect at 3-0 and oh in league play. They were also averaging 34 points a game and came off a game in which they put up a staggering 67 points against Syracuse. And for Bishop Newman, they came into tonight's game with a 4-3 and three overall record and a 2-1 and one record in league play. Bishop Newman was also coming off a 30-17 to 17 loss against Lincoln Lutheran. So they definitely wanted to bounce back in this game. And the final score was a 19-14 victory for Yutton. Next up, number two, Norfolk Catholic was taking on Crofton. Norfolk Catholic came into the game with a 6-1 overall record and was coming off a dominant 53-3 win. For Crofton, this was going to be a tough game for them. They came in with a 4-3 record and previously beating Ponca 29-7. So this was a huge game for Crofton to kind of see where they are as a team. The final score of the game was 41 to 13 with Norfolk Catholic coming out on top. But we do have a recap for you. NCN's Michael Anthony has the recap. Good evening from Crofton, where tonight the Norfolk Catholic Knights move to 7 and 1 on the season with their seventh straight victory over the Crofton Warriors. The final was Norfolk Catholic 41 and Crofton 13. This game started out in great shape for Crofton as they won the opening toss, elected to receive, went down the field, and scored the opening salvo there to go up 7 to nothing. But it was all Catholic after that, especially when it comes to Carter Kirkman. It was the Carter Kirkman show tonight as he's scored three touchdowns, 114 yards on the evening, also picked off a pass and recovered a fumble. But yes, Kirkman early in the second quarter set the tone for Norfolk Catholic with the first of his three scores from 10 yards out. On the ensuing drive for Crofton, Kirkman with the interception. A few plays later, he scores from 37 yards out, and the Knights were off and running. They went up 28-7 on the half on another touchdown by Kirkman and also one by Canyon Talton on a 46-yard end around. And in the second half, dominating on both sides of the ball, a couple more turnovers for Norfolk Catholic, one on an interception, one on a fumble recovery, and one you could call a turnover as they nearly blocked a punt. The Crofton punter was forced to scramble and attempt to pass went incomplete. And the Knights got the ball at the 15 yard line and were able to salt it away with that. So again, Norfolk Catholic, Carter Kirkman, three touchdowns on the night adds up to a 41-13 Knights victory. They're back home against Cedar Catholic to wrap up the regular season next week. Crofton heads to BRLD to try to save their season and get into the postseason as well as they fall to 4-4 four and four, nights at 7-1. and one. Your final 41-13 Norfolk Catholic over Crofton. Michael J. Anthony reporting for News Channel Nebraska. And thanks, Michael, for that recap. Moving on to Class D1 recaps. Number two, Howells Dodge took on Clarkson Lee. Howells Dodge came into the game with a perfect 7-0 record and a 4-0 in league play, and while coming off a 50-12 victory against Guardian Angels Central Catholic, with Clarkson Lee, they came in with an overall record of 5-2 and, and a 3-1 record in league play. 
Their high-scoring offense put up finals against Madison with a 70-12 victory and 60 points in a 60-34 victory over Wisner Pilger. The final score of this game was 30 to nothing with Howes Dodge coming through with a shutout victory. Next in class D1, number four ranked Cross County was taking on Humphrey Lindsay Holy Family. Cross County came into tonight's game with an overall record of 6-1 and one and a perfect 3-0 record in league play. The last two games for Cross County resulted in them putting up back-to-back 60-point -back games. They won 67-6 beating Shelby Rising City and won 67-0 against East Butler. On the other side, Humphrey Lizney Holy Lizney Holy Family came to the game with a 5-2 and two record and, an, and a 2-1 and one overall record in league play. They were coming off a loss to Nebraska Christian by a score of 47 to 28. And the final score of this game was 72 to 24 with Cross County coming out with the victory. And next on the recaps from games around the state, Plattsmith took on Beatrice. Plattsmith came into the game with an unbeaten record of 7 and 0 and was coming off a hard fought victory against Waverly by a score of 21 to 14. On the other side, Beatrice came into the game with a record of 5 and 2 and only 1 and 1 though in league play. So tonight was a huge game for both teams. Here's the highlights. Well, we have ourselves another top 10 clash on News Channel Nebraska. Number two, an undefeated Plattsmith taking on number 10 Beatrice on a crisp fall evening in the House of Orange. Opening drive, Christian Manessis. You'll see a lot of him lowering his shoulder there. That would be a sign of things to come. Although, fourth down, Plattsmith goes for it. And the snap over the quarterback's head. Beatrice given a huge gift to start the game. Now, first offensive play from scrimmage for Beatrice. Elliot Jurgens takes it the other way. 28 yards make it a 7-0 ball game. Beatrice on top early on. Now Plattsmith gets the ball back and of course they're not going to go down easy. How about this pass going up top. Nate Kramer 28 yards to Clyde Hinton. What a catch. Tying things up 7 to zip. And the Blue Devils get the ball back, and Christian Manessis from three yards out makes it 13-7. We had a scoreless second quarter. That would be your score, 13-7 at half. We now head to the third, Beatrice, opening drive of the game, rather of the half. And why not? Power running game. Chuck it up top to your tight end, Tucker Timmerman, for 66 yards. Great pass from Austin Burroughs. And Beatrice takes a one-point lead, 14-13 early in the third. Now Beatrice has the ball back. They're driving, looking to add to that lead. Is he down? Is he not down? Forward progress. Apparently not. Ball pops out. Plattsmith recovers. And this would be a good thing for the Blue Devils as they were able to capitalize on the turnover. Again, we talked about the great receivers that add to Manessis on offense. This time it's Owen Prince, a 48-yarder, and that would set up Manessis, punching it in from four yards out. Platt Smith 2014, Blue Devils get the ball back. This is not the same play you just saw. That's another five-yard touchdown run, making it 26 to 20, Platt Smith. Manessas had 266 yards in this contest on 35 carries. Beatrice not going away. Mr. Burroughs had some great rushes for the Orangemen. In fact, five of them for over 50 yards. And this would be one that was pretty good. A 10-yarder had the whole defense fooled, takes it into the end zone. And we have ourselves a 26-20 game. Beatrice cuts it back to six. They force a three and out from the Blue Devils, get the ball back. And unfortunately, on a comeback drive, they throw an interception. It sets up a fourth Manessis touchdown. 33-20 your score. Beatrice desperately trying to hang in there. This would officially slam the door shut for the Orange Men. A safety courtesy of Ian Martin Morrison makes it 35 to 20. And that is your final score. Plattsmith improves to 8-0, remaining unbeaten. Beatrice drops to 5-3.
And thank you, Brandon. We're down on the field here with winning head coach Bob Dezuris. Coach, this game really had a little bit of everything, some ups and downs. What are your initial thoughts, takeaways here? Well, we, we thought it would be a physical football game, and, and we didn't. that certainly didn't disappoint. Uh, guys did a great job. Um, you know, I think at the end of the night, we made, made one or two fewer mistakes than they did. But, but the bottom line is good, tough football game. We expected that. We knew it'd be a four-quarter game, and, uh, and uh, we played it. Well, we heard that you guys were a physical, tough team. Talk to us a little bit about your guys' mental toughness, because you had a couple of big plays there not go your way, especially early on, you're able to bounce back. Yeah, you know, I think that, that uh, especially the last couple of weeks, um, playing close games into the fourth quarter, uh, that that develops a toughness, that develops a, a, a mindset that, hey, we're always in this thing. We're always in this thing. And, and uh, you know, quite simply, um, I think that uh, that's the mentality we have right now. Like like I often say, we're we're, we're, we're not perfect, but, uh, but uh, Dad Gummer, we're going to play hard. Well, you made some perfect adjustments, especially in the second half on the flies. Beatrice really gave you some different looks offensively. You're still able to come up with a game plan and execute it down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that uh, if, if we're... If we're right on all of our coverages, and, and, and let's face it, we had a couple of kids, it's no excuse, we had a couple of kids miss school because they were sick this week and played a little too much tonight. Um, but but uh, we got to be ready to answer the call, and, and uh, we got a tough football team, and our guys are ready to go. And what can you tell me about tonight's offensive player of the game, Christian Manessis? 35 carries, 266 yards, four touchdowns. Well, he's 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 a dog, you know, as well as all of our offensive linemen. We we, we expect that out of our O line, and, and we've come to expect it out of our running backs. And and, and uh, um, I've had an awful lot of good running backs over the years, and this guy's as good as any of them. Coach, thank you for your time. Congratulations on the victory. This is quite a stat line: 35 carries, 266 yards, four touchdowns. What are your initial thoughts after a performance like that? Um, I mean, they played tough, stuff in the line, stuff in the box. But, uh, I mean, my O-line played balls out the entire time. And as long as they play hard, I'll play just as hard in matches. So any defense, they can take it. Now early on. <laughs> Pretty excited team down here on the sideline. Offensive line's not quitting to do work for you here tonight. No, sir. Tell me about that, the camaraderie. You can tell everyone's pretty excited, not only for the victory here tonight, but for you individually and the run you guys are on now sitting at 8-0. Well, we've all been playing together since we were in grade school, and we've all wanted this. I can't even remember the day it was, but uh, our middle school coach told us that if we don't win state, he's going to be disappointed in us. So. That's kind of our mindset, and it's been our mindset since freshman year in high school. So, Well, Class B, like so many years, just stacked, especially at the top. Yep. A lot of cream starting to rise to the top. You guys are right there. What has to continue for you guys, you know, to get to that ultimate go goal and make a run to Lincoln? we got to stay healthy. we got to keep practicing just as hard, just as good, just as focused. And we can't let anyone else get to our head because if we have the mindset that we're the best, we're going to play the best, and we're going to be the best. So... Christian, congratulations on a stellar performance and a tough road victory here tonight. Thank you. And thanks, Brandon and Andy, for the post-game highlights and the post-game interviews. And for the last of the highlights we have for you tonight, the 5-2 and two Cozad Haymakers took on the Broken Bow Indians, who also had a record of 5-2 and two coming into to tonight's game. Alec Chisholm has the recap. A big Class C district matchup in central Nebraska tonight as Broken Bow hosted Kozad in a matchup of teams with 5-2 and two records. We'll start in the first quarter. Nolan Watovic takes a deep shot down the field. Head court kick a wide open, but it falls incomplete. That's pretty much the story of the first half. Each team would have their chances. You see a big completion here for Broken Bow. Cyrus Wells on the reception. Neither team, though, able to take advantage of the opportunities that they would work so hard to attain. We would actually go into the half at 0-0 zero to zero, thanks to big defensive plays like that one there from Jacob Weatherly. Still in the second quarter, Broken Bow's going to take a deep shot, and it's dropped, in fact, almost intercepted 
So neither team able to take advantage. Third quarter, though, Kozad finally breaks through on a touchdown reception by Cord Kicka. Extra point, though, no good. Kozad's up six to nothing. Broken Bow trying to respond. They would not on this drive, so they stay down six to nothing. In fact, into the fourth quarter. Late in the third, though, setting up that first touchdown is this interception by Caden McKean. Then early fourth quarter, Broken Bow punches it in from one yard out. Then Mutovic stripped. Two turnovers and two possessions for Kozad. The defense, though, steps up and keeps us tied at six halfway through the fourth. But then another turnover. This one, a bad snap on a punt. Broken Bow would recover just outside the goal line and on the next play, punch it in with Cyrus Wells. And they would go up 12-6, to six, and that would be your final score. Kozad drops their third straight and are now 5-3 and three on the year. Broken Bow improves to 6-2. and two. And thanks, Alec, for those highlights. And we want to thank you for watching tonight's first ever episode of NCN Sports Recap. Don't forget to tune in to NCN Sports Now tomorrow as we have live coverage of Wayne State taking on Augustana at 1250, as well as Hastings College squaring off against Dome. Also check out our NCN Sports Twitter account at NCN Sports. We'll see you next Friday.